<laughs> we're no, number one Chinaman. We, uh, do you know what? We're going to be honest here. We we know so little about China. <laughs> it's true. We know so little about China. <laughs> yeah. It's embarrassing. But if you've got any interesting facts about China, then uh, email yeah. him ricky ricky at xfm dot uk. Also, I imagine the email address to use if you're going to take part in this week's Rockbusters. I did read an interesting fact. Um, I'm researching. I'm doing a show called Politics, and I was researching, yeah. and there's a thing about um. Uh, what, you went sweatshops. Online? Yeah, no, no, no. Sweatshops, um, uh, l like uh, Nike. Uh, there's these facts, right? And um, uh, th these these people get like you know a few cents an hour. And the CEO, I forget his name, um, to, to, for a, a Chinese woman to earn his 5.2 billion, she'd have to work um, eight hours a day, seven days a week for 10,000 years. <laughs> But Steve, they don't. They don't. They don't. They they obviously don't want to. Exactly. I don't want to. They don't want to. Lazy, lazy, Rick. <laughs> Ian Jury and the Blockheads, hit me with your rhythm stick. Rick, are you likely to be going to uh, Cumbria on your um, stand-up tour? Uh, almost certainly not. Why? Well, it's just because you might want to visit the Cumberland Pencil Museum. <laughs> Um, that's the journey through the history of pencil making. I do like pencils. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just used one then. <laughs> so, uh, uh, do you have yeah. any idea how that was made? Uh, no, was it? Let me email them. <laughs> um, now, Chinese people. Oh, incidentally, it's the premiere of, uh, China. The premiere. Uh, premiere. Right. right. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah. But, uh, last, when you were away, um, Carl, we worked out if, um, um, if there's one in ten people are sort of like gay in some way, uh, with a billion Chinese people, there's a hundred thousand little, uh, um, little gay lesbian Chinese fellas of some sort. What do you think of that? What do you mean? Well, if, I think so, so some sort of form of, uh, um, gayosity, whatever it's called, uh, is sort of like one in ten, right? One in ten people are gay, apparently. That's right. That does seem a bit higher, doesn't it? I thought it was. I thought it was lower than that. What? You mean more than that? Yeah. I don't think so. I, and I think that's of any sort of nature, anything. Well, what time did they do the survey on the streets as well? Because <laughs> you know they go out late. So if if they're doing the survey sort of around lunchtime, forget it. They're not going to get any. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know what I mean, they're all asleep. But if I say one in the morning, well, it's going to be higher, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know Carl's favourite song, "The Killing of Georgie." Mm. A little fellow, a little gay fellow goes out and, uh, he gets, um, beaten up and that. Carl went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been going out at a decent time? True. But clearly in the lyric, it says, Georgie left the theatre before the final curtain fell. Yeah. Now, theatre's finished about half ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even to give him half hour, I reckon it was only about eleven o'clock. So, you're talking rubbish there. Are you sure that wasn't his curtains in his flat and his clothes in them before he goes out? No, he was at the theatre. But I'll tell you what, I just realised something. Maybe where most people were going home after theatre, he was just going out. Exactly. That theatre to him is like a matinee. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. He's off out clubbing, isn't he? <laughs> he's off down, he's gonna get some ammo, he's yeah. gonna get a couple of butt plugs, yeah. and he's gonna, he's not even gonna start dancing till yeah. midnight, is he? Have, have any of us ever met any gay people? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, our view of them <laughs> is, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, email in if you've met a gay person. Yeah, yeah, Tell us yeah. where we, uh, where we're going wrong. Yeah. Have you ever met a gay person? I mean, the way we talk about these, it's like, have yeah. we ever met Chinese people? Uh. I've seen them. I've seen them out there wandering the streets, but I don't think I've ever had a No, it, no, here's the irony. I definitely know and have met more little gay fellas than little Chinese fellas. Yeah. Have you ever had any little Chinese friends? There was a- no, there was a girl at school who was Chinese, but she was kind of inscrutable. I couldn't really- couldn't get close to her, she was sort of mysterious. Right. Rockbusters? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> right then, this is where I, uh, give you a little cryptic clue. And some initials, and it sort of makes up a band or an artist mm. and stuff like that. Yeah, mm. Sort of being the operative phrase, Yeah. Uh, Let's see how we read this clue. Yeah. This is gonna sound like Oscar Wilde. <laughs> clue number one. Three different clues. Clue Oscar Wilde was Chinese, apparently. Was uh, it? Yeah, it was legal then. Right. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Sorry? Right? Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Are we back on the gay thing, or is this- This is, this is the clue? No, that's the clue. Right. Clue for Rockbusters number one. Will you just leave the entrance to my garden alone, will you? Right, that doesn't count, because I know what it is. And what was- sorry, what were the initials? What were the initials? GG. Correct. 
Yeah, right, but you've got to pronounce the artist correctly. I'll pronounce the artist, because I know what it is. Don't ruin it. No, no, no when, when the answer comes, I'll pronounce the artist. Right, can we just focus, please, on the quiz? Go. What was the clue again? Give it again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Not messing with it, right? G G. Okay. Right? <clears throat> Next. Doesn't count. Next. Incorrect. Uh, don't phone, but you can send a message on my mobile if you want, right? That's yeah. T. It's another little, little easy one. And, uh, the last one. We were sharing out the mail sheet. Right, that doesn't count either. Can we, we just fuck I know, I know what that is. I know what that is. I don't care. We'll come to that later. Yeah. And number three. <laughs> we were sharing out the mail sheet, and I think I got the best one. Right? DG. DG. Yeah. So quickly again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Yeah. It's not messing about with it. Yeah. Right? GG. Yeah. Don't phone, but you can send us a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That was T. <laughs> And the last one was sharing out the male sheep, and I got the best one, so that's good. Right? <laughs> DG. <laughs> All right, Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Have we got any prizes? Uh, do you want to have a look? Well, don't worry about it. Just oh, this is don't pathetic. worry about it. Have we got any prizes? Just uh, look, the yeah, clues fine. are rubbish. The clues don't work. The show. It's. I mean, this is pathetic. Play a record. That's what it should be called, and the clues don't work. <laughs> 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 right. So uh, the first one. Uh, Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Right? That was the cryptic clue. The initials were GG. Yeah. That was Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth Gareth. I, what, what would Get you off. Gareth Gates. No, 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 right? no, but it's Gareth Gates, isn't it? So, <laughs> why would you say to someone Gareth? Is that like a, what's that, a Manchester well, thing when you say Gareth? Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth, 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 yeah, Gareth Gates. Yeah, Gareth, Gareth Gates. The bloke, yeah. the bloke who came second in Popeye, but yeah, Gareth Gates. So that's the first what one. What was that about getting off the thing, though? Get, leave my. Leave my entrance alone, though. I don't understand what it's got to do with leaving my entrance alone. The, ga the gate Gareth, to the garden. Well, no, not the gate bit, but what's Gareth got to the do with it? The second one was, ignoramus. don't, don't phone, but you can send me a message on, yeah. uh, on my mobile if you want. Yeah. The initial was T. Yeah. Texas, right? Just... No, it's text. The word's text. Yeah, te so you'd have to Texas. say text, uh, me. Texas. Text, what do you mean? No, text me. What's that? The third one was, uh, we were sharing out the, uh, the male sheep and that, right? Yeah. Uh, I got, I got the best one. DG, right? We're sharing out the male sheep. Get to it! It doesn't all work anyway. Get to DG. it. What is it? Delta Good Ram. <laughs> Delta <laughs> Good Ram. You were Delta Good Ram. Blur, out of time on XFM. Well, we're not out of time. We've still got an hour left, boys. <laughs> hey! Luckily. Brilliant. A lot of uh, emails, obviously, about the Chinese. People f as fascinated as we are. I don't want to discuss it, you know, interminably, Rick, because there's so much to say and we've said most of it in the past. Yeah. Get a couple of emails. In fact, I think, Carl, you told us this information. Remind me of it again. If all the Chinese people in the world were... We're in a line on that, because there's loads of them, you'd never get to the end of it. Right. No, it's not that. It is it's not. No, if all the Chinese people formed a line and started walking out of China, you'd never get to the end of it. That's what I just said. No, it's because, though, um... That, yeah, but that, 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 they'd, that... Be, they'd be having babies, um, you know what I mean? Still, it'd be adding to it all the time, wouldn't you? But would they be, would they be walking and shagging <laughs> and <laughs> having babies as they're walking out? Yeah. That's, that is, yeah. That's... I'd love to see someone organise that. Maybe the record breakers team. I tell you what, I'd love to see Ross McWhorter or Norris, whoever's, who is it? Who's the one that's alive? I forget, Norris, I think. Norris, right. I'd love to see him uh, to coordinate that. Yeah. At 1.2 billion. Little Chinese fellas. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And where are they walking out of China? Which exit are they taking? They're taking the... Through Tibet? Uh, or? I think it's the... I, I think it's the... Uh, Gate 9 Slip Road, the M43. <laughs> right. To St. Petersburg. Right. right. And they go, and walking, <laughs> and shaggy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because some presumably are dying as they're leaving. No, but they live to 120. That's true. So... So they cling. So, you yeah, well... We know Carl's theory on that. Do you yeah. want to just tell new listeners your theory about uh, when, these, th when all these Chinese people get the records for oldest oh, people yeah. in the world? Come on, what's your theory, Carl? Carl, just, what? Just that they're probably lying. Why? Because a lot of them don't age that well. Some of them do. A lot of them don't, and yeah. they always look older than they are. <laughs> I read the other day, right? Do you know the one who was the oldest woman in the world? Mm -hmm. Right, Chinese woman, right? Yeah. Um, the way she did it, <laughs> it was... <laughs> She didn't die. That was a, that was her secret. Yeah. What she did, she got up every day and didn't die. No, no, she, uh, she was, like, <laughs> awake and that, and then she'd have two days just sleeping. Right. So she wasn't really that old. 
<laughs> what do you mean? Well, she'd only sort of lived half of her life in a way. Well, we so all live two thirds off. of our life, don't we? No, but we she she was like awake and that, and then she'd go, oh, I'm out of bed, and then that'd be it for two days. Travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel, and I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to, and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good as it. It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't I don't believe in going back to places. What do you, what what do you understand the question as? Uh, do do. You, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back, you are that child again, you're in the body, you are the child, or you've got your adult um, head and experiences well, on, you know, you could- Rick, can... I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations, <laughs> no, let's be honest, but now that you've flagged I them up- I think he was thinking of him as he is now, in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but too big for foot. the chairs. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, come on. No, I, I don't think I'd- I would go back. It's all happened now, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, okay, well, let's- Choose an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on, enough. I think, let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again, how would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever, but then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff, because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why why pass the book, is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What what about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like uh, you like know what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does at the Ghost of Christmas Past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yes, you're not, not changing. You're just observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you question. What. This is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. Do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah. I nearly died once in a, on a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's absurd. About? You're now saying you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <laughs> and we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch them. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I don't think you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasize. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I... mind can't fathom right, well, something unless it's like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, safe this one good moment when I was about six that I loved. Mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You could go back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down! Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just, well, yeah, just sort annoyed about sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <sighs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. 
I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard it properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? Didn't I gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place. The toilet rolls and that, so I said, oh, I've come to have a dance, and like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just mean, like, say, say, if, you know, they're running out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is tech out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go No, on. no, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is... Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. <laughs> That's what the program's called. It's the same every week. The volunteer is just a head with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we can do in science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, I feel Ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you are one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Like Descartes. Watched a program on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> Question from uh, Jade Carl. What would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because I mean, your school experience was a bit. If you got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, which is four. Right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think you should be asked more questions that make him think rather than something. That has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, To teaching them the, 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 the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out of it as well, just going, <laughs> like... <laughs> I knew that's where it was going. Because yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking, you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? Exactly. To be a human. Or, or teaching them sort of, like, philosophy on a basic level that, you know, teaching them the love for learning, so, yeah. you know, get them up to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn, as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas... He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like, how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? That's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's it not a dishwasher in, a on Mars. Why not? 
because... Doesn't mean why not? Why did it... How did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like... Not dishwashers. What do you think the, the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No-one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half-arsed, aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day? So, it didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash-landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars and it, it, it got... Probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't it? But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No-one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, because it's about... old, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So, ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars, we've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space show in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them, tight space. You don't want to, but who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Uh, out of the Earth's atmosphere. So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... How <laughs> many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right, say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it... To one, to, one... one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more... Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing They haven't got up, a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking out ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No. Um, I'd like Carl to read this out. Okay. Yeah, do you, do you mind? Read it out, just read it out loud. Which one? Oh. Yeah, the, the gods are here, right, right, okay. Just read that, that's just a, a good bit. Invite the gods yeah. of wealth into your home. Yeah. The Chinese have several gods of wealth. Yeah. Which they display in their homes to attract... what? Prosperity. Prosperity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My personal favourite is C.C.S.G. Yi. Yeah. Who sits on a tiger. He sits on a tiger? <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. It's pretty difficult to find this, this fella. Yep. If you could use Kan Kung, or the three star gods, oh, no. Read him out! Read out the names of the star gods. F-U-K. <laughs> read well, it out! Just read that! It's, it's, it's a, a Chinese god! god. You're allowed, allowed Chinese to say god. Chinese god no, on the radio. No. You are allowed to say well, if Chinese... you're allowed to say it, you say it then. Well, it, it, you look, it's, look, you're so immature. Read the three of them out, Okay, um, if he is difficult to find, you should use Kwan Kung. Or the three star gods, Fuck Luck and Sal, all of whom bring wealth and prosperity. Now, what were the names of the gods again? Because I just, I'm, if I'm making it, a note at home, Rick, well, it's, it's just, it's the Chinese god. Yeah, it's this Quang Kun, or you can use Luck Sal. Or... <coughs> you can't. What? But it's a god, F U K. So, 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 yeah. yeah, I assume. I don't know if we're, if we're pronouncing it wrong. I really apologise. Apologies, apologies there, if, if we're offending anyone who's uh, of an Oriental persuasion. But that's Quang Kun, or Luck Sal, or Fuck. <laughs> and any of those gods are available at a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Near you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Feng Shui. It's an ancient art. You can't give me that look. Clinic. Walking with thee. Um, so there, that's uh, Feng Shui. That's we've, Feng Shui sorting. We've given away donuts. We've talked a little bit about um, band names today. We've uh, more insight into Carl's psyche. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you, you, uh, it's during that record, you said, uh, oh, we knock everything. Mm. You saw something about the Bermuda Triangle, didn't you? That... Yeah, when I talked about ghosts, you sort of just, because uh, you don't believe in it. Mm. You, I think it's because you're scared of it, to be honest, and you can't admit to, to understanding it and sure. actually believing in it. Sure. Thing on last night, Steve. Yes. Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yeah. Do you know much about that? Um, mainly the uh, song yeah. by, what was his name? What's his name? Bermuda, um, Bermuda Triangle, triangle where, where people no, disappear. No, Bermuda the Triangle. What's his name? No, Barry Manilow. Barry, Barry Manilow. Yeah. Are you familiar with the lyrics? Bermuda Triangle, where people disappear. Bermuda Triangle, don't go near. Yeah. I shouldn't really make a joke out of it. No, you're right. Go on. But, um, 
what it is, right? There's a program saying what it what it's about. Do you, I mean, what do you know about it? Uh, as I say, mainly from what Barry's told me, but uh, certainly planes and various boats have gone missing within the Bermuda Triangle. Planes. Mm. Yeah, but obviously that documentary didn't explore it. He, he, he learned a lot about that. For that. I, I learned a lot about American history through We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. Again, most so. of my knowledge of um, the uh, sort of you know, Tsarist Russia comes from uh, Ru Russian Putin Russian by um, yeah. Boney M. Well, yeah. He was the lover of the Russian Queen. They put you know, poison into his wine. Yeah, yeah. They shot him till he was dead. Yeah. Which is, you know. Go on. Right. Well, this. Oh, those right. Russians. Sort of a uh, bit, bit of an earthquake in the sea. Sure. Let's out methane gas. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, if methane gas, if you were swimming out in the sea, yeah. and there was like a, an earthquake and some methane came out, yeah. you can't swim in it, you just sink. Okay. Even if you're a good swimmer. What, what, what happens if you're, you're two lads from your school? And they were heads. Yeah, that, that, that's that's a that's like a buoy. Doesn't so you work. can see them a mile off, no, no, and no. their webbed hands would get them into shore. Because they did actually say, even if you're wearing a life jacket, if if the water's full of methane, right? You, you just can, sink. You just sink. So what he's saying is, boats have gone across the sea, mm. got a load of methane in the sea, and the boat just sinks. Right. What about the planes? Is it then sort of planes with little sort of floaty things Could on? Could be. That'll start that with the sort they've landed in the sea. Right. And <laughs> methane's coming. Well, sorry, Carl. What did the documentary say? Not, not I imagine. Yeah, your hypothesis might be working. Yeah. What well, did they, they say in the documentary? They didn't cover did that bit. They didn't, didn't do cover the planes. planes. They didn't do the planes. Something else they said about it, though. Go on. Loch Ness, mm -hmm. the monster. Yep. Sure. Probably doesn't exist. Okay. What oh. it is? The interest Hold on, interesting. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yes. Uh, what they thought it did not this probably didn't exist. Curious viewpoint. Hold on. What, what proof have they got for that, Carl? How can they go around saying stupid things like that? It's methane. Right. In, in Loch Ness. And people have seen. Um, what's the what's the lake? It's in Loch Ness. Loch Ness. Yeah. Um, it being the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it lives. That's how it finds its that's way home. That's certainly the clue. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you get again, Carl, yeah. that's the clue. Yeah, if you go. And, it's, and if it's out uh, wondering, he goes, Excuse me, uh, would you know where uh, I'm being the Loch Ness monster? Where, where would I be gone? <laughs> oh, you'd be going to the Loch Ness if that's your home. It's way over there, you so big anyway, monster, you. So the bubbles from sure. the methane mm. bubble up out of the water. Yeah. And people yeah. think, Oh, God, it's a monster's head. But it's not, it's just water sort of shooting up because of the bubbles. Well, that's two of the great mysteries of the universe solved by mm -hmm. Carl P on a, on a Saturday afternoon. That is fantastic. Yeah. So, that makes me, that makes me think a lot of things. So, you know, when mediums are sort of like going, oh, I've got something coming through. Mm. Do you think they are uh, exhaling a lot of methane gas and thus, thus making them not think straight? Do you think everything's down to methane gas? Do you think that all the mysteries of the universe are down to methane gas, Carl? What did it say in the documentary you saw? About what? What was the budgie happy? We know that budgie was sad. Was it? Was it in a room? Because they used to take canaries down the mines, didn't they? They used to take canaries down the mines. They'd smell the methane, and then the budgie would be happy. I'm not going to teach you anymore. Play record. Our freaks electric, Richard X, and the sugar babes mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly through. We've had a few laughs again. Yep. A few tears. Absolutely, as always. A few, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, and don't don't be alarmed. I, I look quite frightening, but I'm uh, merely a, a nice monster. I seem to have lost my way home. Uh, could you direct me in the right direction? Ah, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, Carpio. Hi. Um, what's your name? W why do you need to know my name? Well, it might help me to find out where you come from. Oh, my name's the Loch Ness monster. Okay, all right. Give me a second. Um, what was your name again? Loch Ness monster. See, this is what I mean. <laughs> when you came in, you're all over me. Like a rash. Being nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> Gets towards the end. Nasty. It's the phone. Answer it. See who it is. Can you give us a second, uh, listeners? Just amuse yourselves for a moment. Who is it? We're speaking to uh, Carl's just on the phone there, speaking to someone. Um, we'll just uh, keep you abreast of who that is. Uh, who is it? Time. It's uh, it 10 to 3. Wants to know if you're doing a live show somewhere tonight. So uh, just a private call now, um, uh, asking Ricky. Uh, I am, yeah. Later. But, Ricky, I, but I don't want to say it now. I, I've, I've, well, I've, well, um, I've got in mind one person now. I've got to get out of office and uh, often performs live <laughs> at uh, different <laughs> venues <laughs> around <laughs> the yeah. country. Um, uh, okay. So while those two take care of business, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, have you finished that private call? Yes. Jeez, that was outrageous. Um, you know you're a fan of Feng Shui, Colin. You believe it's all true. <laughs> 
Um, I just I just run this one past you just on the off chance. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it, it maybe that you try to change your opinion slightly. Yeah. Feng Shui teaches you to use your environment wisely. Sure. If your land and the surrounding area is undulating, it's said to house auspicious dragons. <laughs> when land is flat and featureless, the dragon is missing and the land is said to be less auspicious. Uh, excuse me, they call me the, uh, uh Brixton Dragon. Sure, sure. Uh, I seem to have lost my way. I, I know it's south London somewhere, but, uh, uh could you help me... Find my home. What's, it, what, 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 what's your name? Well, they call me the Brixton Dragon. Uh, right, where are you from? Uh, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> oh, I uh, see what you mean, aye. Oh, the came So is that, does, that, does that make you query at all, the dragon? I'm not into it that much. Right, I'm sure. I'm just saying that if you have your head at one end of the bed rather than the other, it might make a difference to your night's yeah. sleep. It's not so much yeah. Feng Shui, though, is it, as sort of good advice, hmm. generally. When you went home... Don't, don't sleep on the end of a spike near a cliff. Good advice. I mean, that, that's good advice, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. When you went home and uh, the house was full of women, <laughs> why, why did you why did you sleep on the sofa? Why did you not pop upstairs and sort of into a warm bed? Yeah, with a, with a, with a woman. <laughs> 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 were, were they dressed or? Is your brother still sort of have those kind of parties or? I haven't seen him for years. Sure, sure, sure. Where's oh, really? he living now? I don't know. Okay. What's his name? Mark. <laughs> it's not. He's not. He's not known as like Moss Side Mark. Because I can be a clue. Ten <laughs> Dawlish Road, Mark. He's never out of prison long enough to get a nickname. Hey, really? steady on, it's getting a bit heavy, isn't it? God, is this is this what's motivated a lot of your anxiety? Yeah, oh, the hair wheels. loss, that sort of thing. We always go a little bit too far, don't we? A little bit dark at the end of the show. I know. Well, it's, um, oh, wow. Well, sorry about that. for Pete. Oh, Pete wanting a little bit of Muse. Yeah, if Pete wants it. I mean, I don't. I'm not a big fan. I don't mind Muse. I don't, I've still not got over them them doing that. Um, summertime song. What was it called? Nina Simone cover, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, listen. Let's not bring the show down. Uh, no. Let's play Muse, and then it's we'll be in South finished. Kensington. Yeah. Plug in, baby. Let's enjoy it.